down. Your enemy can't kill this dead set. Double down. Ten seconds. Ladies and gents, my name is Xander, aka Deicide, and in this video, we're going to discuss and review this oh-so-exceptional and very intriguing hunter exotic called the Assassin's Cow. But this time around, we're not just doing a typical review, and instead, we're going to do an entire PvP build designed around this exotic. If you want to become an oh-so-evasive little munchkin, or rather, you want to become a sneaky ninja just like a Naruto, then do I have a wonderful surprise in store for all of you. And the way in which this is going to be done is not just with the exotic itself, but rather it's going to be done with some other exotic weapons, aka the Monte Carlo, some other legendary weapons, as well as the way of the current Arcturus subclass, some mods that you can put on this entire subclass and armor, as well as some perks that are really going to have a marvelous symbiotic relationship. To find out how all these things are going to work and function, the only thing we have to do is just to simply sit back, relax, eviscerate that notification button, and let's jump right into the video. Before we go any further, you guys have got to understand how to get your hands on this exotic hunter helmet called the Assassin's Cowl. And it's very, very simple, as all you gotta do is buy the Shadow Keep DLC and then simply complete the campaign associated with it. And as soon as you do so, at the very, very end of it, you'll then acquire this exotic helmet. Bada bing, bada boom, you've got it in your arsenal and you can use it in PvP or in PvE. Now, the build that you guys are about to see is designed for PvP. But that does not mean that you can't use it in PvE, as I've done that as well, and it works just as good. But as you all know, I'm a PvP kind of guy, and so for me, that's what I live for. As we inspect it, you guys can see that it's got Vanishing Execution. And Vanishing Execution states that defeating a Guardian with a melee attack or a combatant with a finisher grants invisibility and restores a portion of your health and your shields. In other words, all we simply have to do is to do one thing in PvP, and that is to finish off a Guardian with a melee attack. And as soon as we do so, we gain three attributes, and those three attributes are invisibility, restoring our base health, and restoring our shields all at the exact same time. What we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that we're going to have our melee ability almost 24-7. And understanding that, we have a marvelous and oh so spectacular exotic weapon that can actually give us our melee ability very, very frequently, and that is the Monte Carlo. More specifically, it's got the Monte Carlo method perk, and that perk states that dealing damage with this weapon reduces your melee cooldown and grants a chance to fully charge your melee ability with each and every single kill in PvP. Taking one teeny tiny step back, I want you to understand that the Monte Carlo then does this in two ways, and that is by simply first doing damage, and as you do damage on other guardians, you are then going to incur a faster recharge rate and we're going to see that go up very, very rapidly. But number two, as soon as you happen to get that kill, or rather if you do get a kill or multiple kills, you're then going to have approximately an 80% chance of getting that weapon or rather the perk to proc and give you that melee ability back instantly. Now I can't say for 110% certainty if that approximate 80% chance of what I'm saying is really true, but let me tell you, that from my extensive use of the weapon, I can definitely say that the percentage is certainly that high and it might be even higher. And that, Dia Slayers, is not an exaggeration. In hearing that, you guys can now really, really see as to how this one exotic weapon, the Monte Carlo and its perk, the Monte Carlo Method, is then going to constantly give us a very, very good chance of getting our melee ability back. And thus, at the same time, we're then going to be able to proc Vanishing Execution on the Assassin's Cow that much more frequently and that's the entire intention of this entire build. Following this exact same wavelength of the Monte Carlo, what I want to show you guys next is something that can then correlate even more so with melee kills, and that is on the Monte Carlo itself, Markov Chain. Markov Chain states that this weapon gains increased damage from melee kills and kills with the weapon, while melee kills grant ammo for the weapon. At this point in time, I've got a feeling that many of you are probably wondering, okay, well, how exactly is this going to work? Well, with Markov Chain, you can proc this almost the exact same way as what Swashbuckler works, as it can stack from once, twice, three times, all the way up to five times. And the way in which you get times one, times two, and times three is simply by getting killed with the weapon itself. 
But what I really want you to focus on here is actually getting that melee kill first, because as soon as you happen to do so, you instantly get Markov Chain times five. And that's where all these fantastic and oh so wondrous things happen to make this thing's lethality go up so much through the roof, you're bound to get that kill. And once that happens, you have a very, very high chance of once again, regaining that melee ability. Just to kind of put things into perspective for you, I want you guys to understand this weapon's TTK stats right there on screen. Now on the left hand side, we have the weapon's base TTK stats, where on the right hand side, we have Markov Chain times 5. Right off the bat, you're going to notice that this weapon's base TTK stats is at 0.8 seconds for its optimal time to kill. But when you happen to have Markov Chain times 5, that then goes down to 0.6 seconds. And that, my friends, is absolutely marvelous and makes this thing very, very competitive even in the current sandbox. If you guys want to know more about all this stuff, in particular the weapon's perks, its other stats, and all that kind of jazz, that I've made a review which I'll link for you up in the top right hand corner of your screen this very second. And having seen the Monte Carlo's TTK stats, more specifically Markov Chain times 5, you guys can really see that not only is this weapon's lethality going to be very, very good, but the glorious relationship between it and the Assassin's Call Exotic Helmet is fantastic. But if you really want to dive deep into this, then what you have to do is you have to use a particular subclass on the Hunter, and that is the Arkstrider's Way of the current subclass. To better understand this, what I want to do now is I want to inspect the Way of the current subclass itself. And the first bird that we happen to have is Tempest Strike. And Tempest Strike states that after sliding, activate this melee ability to unleash a devastating uppercut. Ensuing this is another perk called Ebb and Flow. And Ebb and Flow states that hitting a target with an arc ability electrifies them, and that meleeing electrified enemies disorientates them, granting grenade, melee, and dodge energy. Lastly, we have our third perk here, and this is called Lightning Weave. And Lightning Weave states that melee hits grant increased weapon reload. And so in having said all three of these things, you can really, really tell that this weapon's melee ability is literally going to proc not just Ebb and Flow, but it's also going to proc Lightning Weave all while simultaneously going to allow you to proc Vanishing Execution on the Assassin's Cal, getting more invisibility, regenerating your health, and granting shield while still proccing Markov Chain Times 5 on the Monte Carlo, giving you the Highly Fowly stat that's going to absolutely annihilate, eradicate, and decimate every guardian in your path, making enemy guardians a little bit salty. And seeing the way of the current subclass perks, you guys now understand how you can generate your melee ability in one of two ways, and that is of course with ebb and flow, but at the same time we can't forget about the Monte Carlo method perk found on the Monte Carlo. And so with those two things, you're going to get that melee ability very very quickly. But to even take this one step further, you can still generate your melee ability in a third way, and that is with the Hunter's class ability, aka Gambler's Dodge. Gambler's Dodge states that dodging performs a tumble, avoiding enemy attacks, but dodging nearby enemies fully recharges your melee ability. Remember, the entire intention of this complete build is to gain back that melee ability as often as you can. And so with Gambler's Dodge, not only are you going to be able to do this, but you're going to do it even faster with Ebb and Flow, and you're also going to do it with the Monte Carlo method all at the same time. And with this Gambler's Dodge ability, you're also then going to have the chance to not only be very, very evasive like a little sneaky ninja, but you can then get that uppercut on them very, very quickly with the Tempest Strike. And doing that, you're then going to proc Vanishing Execution going up into a puff of smoke, or rather just simply become invisible altogether, and that's then going to also regen part of your health and your shield, and so you guys can really, really see how this is all coming into play. Now, the very, very last thing that I want to cover with this complete build is some armor mods and some perks. And the way in which I believe that you can do this even better and achieve this build's optimal efficiency is by simply looking at one in particular armor mod, and that is Paragon Mods. As I show you my characters and my armor sets, you are then going to recognize that I'm using specifically three Paragon Mods. And those Paragon Mods are then going to increase my class ability regeneration speed, and in this case, that then means Gambler's Dodge. Yet again, you can see that with these three specific mods, I'm then going to proc my regen for Gambler's Dodge, and thus in turn proc my regen for my melee ability, or at least increase the odds of getting that thing back much, much faster. But the way in which you can do this even better is by simply using some perks, and in particular, that can be Dynamo, Distribution, or Perpetuation. With Dynamo, 
This is then going to reduce your super cooldown when using your class ability. And this for me is exactly what I'm doing because I want to get that super back or at least I want to try to. And unfortunately, I don't have quite enough armor pieces in Armor 2.0 to really take full advantage of using some of these great things that I'll talk about in just a couple of seconds. But for now, what I will show you is the next two perks called Perpetuation and Distribution, which if you still choose, you can use to substitute that for Dynamo, or you might even use all three at once and it's going to be totally up to you. With the perk called Perpetuation, it's then going to reduce your class ability cooldown when using your class ability. Or you might want to use something like Distribution, and that's then going to reduce all ability cooldowns when using your class ability. If you were to ask me, I think that Perpetuation is actually going to give you the best overall efficiency here to make this build synergize the best, and that's because your class ability is literally going to cool down your class ability, and that's then going to allow you to once again get Gambler's Dodge that much faster, which in turn is then going to instantly regen your melee ability just like a Thanos Snap. The only other thing that I want to say in regards to this entire build is that as of the making of this video, I simply do not have enough Armor 2.0 perks, or rather Armor 2.0 pieces of armor, that are going to allow me to have an even better build than the one that I just showed you. But with Armor 2.0, you can see that on my Hunter Cloak, I might be able to use a wide variety of mods as well as some other perks. And so in this sense, you can also do the exact same thing on top of it within the leg perks. And so that way, you can really come up with some crazy cool ideas here and the limit is just up to your creativity, or rather, it might even be up to how much energy that you can have on each one of these armor pieces. Oh, I can't believe this. I almost forgot one of the most awesome things about this entire build as a whole. And that is that remember, this Wave the Current Arc Strider Super is classified as a melee ability with the Arc Staff itself. And so every single time that you happen to get a kill, you're then going to proc the perk Vanishing Execution on the Assassin's Cowl while you're in your super. And this then means to you that you're going to become Invis in your super, regen health in your super, and regen shields in your super. And that, my friends, is mind-boggling on so many levels that I can't even begin to tell you as to how stupendous that that really is. With that teeny tiny little bit of added information on the super and how that's then going to proc Assassin's Call via the Vanishing Execution perk, you guys can really see that with the Monte Carlo, the way of the current Arxtrara subclass, the Hunter class ability, Gambler's Dodge, and some armor mods slash perks of Paragon mods, Dynamo, Perpetuation, or Distribution, that synergy is just out of this world. However, I'm not gonna lie to you, my friends. In order for this entire build to work the way in which it's intended, you have to have two things, and that is number one, a very, very aggressive playstyle, because without it, you're never gonna be able to use that melee ability fast enough to get those kills and thus create that domino effect this entire build is designed around. But not just this, number two, you're gonna have to practice. And I mean this with the best of intentions because right off the bat, I thought that this was a decent build, but I was getting destroyed left and right. But then eventually, with a little bit more practice and the way in which the playstyle was intended, then I got the hang of it and I know you can too. With a little crispy and juicy and oh so spicy seasoning, I think that those two ingredients are definitely going to be something that you guys can acquire. And with that, you're then going to love this build and it's gonna be an absolute blast. But having said that, I want to know your guys' thoughts on this down in the comment section below. Did you like it or did you not, or rather, did you find it somewhere in between? No matter what you guys say, you always know that I'm certainly going to respect your opinions, and that is something that I can guarantee. Lastly, be sure to watch the newest, check the latest, and share a comment like on social media because you are the greatest. That's pretty much all I've got for you as of right now, DS Slayers. As always, GG TNT.